All right, guys, we're going to look at the four key features of a quadratic function in factored form. So we've got y equals x plus 2 in brackets and x take 4. So our first feature we're going to look at is the y-intercept. Now, we've discussed this before. To find the y-intercept, we simply substitute the x value of 0 into our function, and that's going to allow us to find the corresponding y value. Okay, it's a nice, simple way of finding the y-intercept for all functions. So... We've got y equals x plus 2, and got x take 4. We take that x, we put a 0. Take that x, put a 0. And we'll get 0 plus 2. We get 0 take 4. That's going to leave us with 2 times negative 4, which gives us negative 8. Now remember, we want the coordinate because it's an actual point. So let's put our coordinates down. Our x value is 0, y value is negative 8. All right, our next key feature is our x-intercepts. All right, this is a relatively easy process when it's in factored form. So to find our x-intercept, we're substituting y equals 0 into our equation, and we're going to use the null factor law. Now we've talked about the null factor law in class, we've done solving equations with the null factor law, so this is not new to anyone. So what we've got here is we're going to have uh, 0 in replace of our y, so we're going to get 0. Here, well, here's our function, y equals x plus 2, x take 4. We're going to replace that y with 0. And now, using our null factor law, we've got one bracket must equal 0, so x plus 2 must equal 0, or x take 4 must equal 0. We solve for these to get x equals negative 2, x equals positive 4, and we write our coordinates down for our x-intercepts, negative 2, 0, 4, and 0. All right, so factored form's really good and really simple to find our x-intercepts. Okay, so... After finding our x-intercepts, we're going to move on to find the line of symmetry. All right. Now, the unique aspect about the line of symmetry is that we're actually after an equation. And because it's a line of symmetry, it's going to be a vertical equation. That equation is going to be in the form of x equals a, where a is some value of x. Now the unique part of the line of symmetry is that because it's a symmetrical shape, our line of symmetry passes through the turning point as well. So this value of the x in the line of symmetry will also be the same x value in our turning point. So they're linked. That's really important to actually note. So the x value of the line of symmetry is also the same as the x value in the turning point. Okay, Keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at a graphical approach to what we're talking about in terms of the line of symmetry. So remember, we're looking at the midpoint between two corresponding points. So do we have two points? Well, we just found our x-intercepts, and that was when y is equal to 0. So we have two points that we can use to actually find the midpoint between those two points to help us find the line of symmetry. So remember, we got one of our x-intercepts as being 4, the other one being negative 2. So we want to find the midpoint between those two points there. So the middle of the distance between those two points would be 3. So we go back 3 and there is our midpoint and that's our line of symmetry. Now it passes through x equals 1. So let's look at some of the coordinates on that. You'll notice a pattern developing here where all our x values are 1. So we have an equation for our line of symmetry and that is x is equal to 1. And there it is. That's our equation. That's a graphical representation of it. Well, let's look at the algebraic approach to finding our line of symmetry. Now, having done and completed linear graphing, we looked at the midpoint between two points. Okay, So we have two points in the form of our x-intercepts. So what we're looking for is we're looking to review what we did in linear functions and finding the midpoint between two points. So remember back in linear functions we had an equation. That equation was adding the two x values together and halving them, adding the two y values together and halving them, and that would allow us to find the midpoint between two points. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So let's look at using that with our two points, negative 2, 0 and 4, 0. That's our x-intercepts. There's our first and second coordinates. So let's look at putting that together. So negative 2 plus 4 over 2. We've got 0 plus 0 over 2. And now we 
simplify that down to get 2 over 2 and 0, which is 1 and 0. Now you'll notice the x value there is 1. And there's our equation, x is equal to 1. So if we go back and have a look at our graphical approach, we get the same answer, x equals 1. Alright, so let's look at our last key feature. So we found the y-intercept, we found the x-intercepts, we found the line of symmetry, so the last thing we actually need to find now is the turning point. Now as I stated before, the turning point and the line of symmetry are linked. Can you remember what I said? Alright, so the line of symmetry passes through the turning point. Therefore, the x value of the line of symmetry will also equal the x value of the turning point. Alright, that's critical in calculating our turning point. So if we know our line of symmetry, we can find our turning point. All we have to do is substitute our line of symmetry into our equation. So we've got x equals 1, and we take that x equals 1, and we want to find that y value. We substitute the x value in to find our corresponding y value. So we take our equation, so we had y is equal to x plus 2, and y x take 4. We're going to substitute x equals 1 for the values there. We're going to get 1 plus 2, and we're going to get 1 take 4. And we're going to get 3 multiplied by negative 3, which gives us negative 9. And as a coordinate, our turning point will be x equals 1, and the y value will be negative 9. And there you go. All right, let's go through two examples. Now, I'm going to go through these quick, so you really got to keep up, guys. Here's um, my first factored form, x plus 3 and x take 2. This one's going to be uh, a little bit harder. Um, because we're going to have a line of symmetry that's going to be a bit harder. So let's look at finding our y-intercept first. That's the easiest point. We substitute, again, x equals 0 into our equation. So we're going to get 0 plus 3 and 0 take 2, leaving us with 3 times negative 2, which gives us negative 6. And there's our coordinates, 0, negative 6. All right, our x-intercepts. Remind yourself, we're going to substitute y equals 0 in, and we're going to use the null factor law. All right, it's in factored form. It's really easy to do. Remember, each bracket's got to equal 0, so we're going to write x plus 3 equals 0, and then we write x take 2 equals 0, and then we solve for both those x values, and then we write it in coordinate form. So we're going to have negative 3, 0, and we're going to have 2, 0. Remember, factored form's a great form to have to find x-intercepts. All right, our line of symmetry. Now remember, that's our midpoint, so we're just going to go straight into using our formula to find our midpoint of between the two points, okay? So we've got our x-intercepts, we've got negative 3, 0, and we've got 2, 0. So we add the two x values together, negative 3 plus 2, and then halve it. And then we know the y value is going to be 0. So add those two together, we're going to get negative a half. That means our equation will be x equals negative a half. That's it, we're done. Now remember, the last thing we've got to do is find our turning point. Now remember, our x value from our line of symmetry will be substituted into our equation and that will allow us to find our y value that corresponds with x equals negative a half. Okay, so let's look at substituting that in. We've got negative a half plus 3, and then we're going to have negative a half subtract away 2. All right, when it's in fraction form, it's maybe a little bit easier to leave it in um, fraction form as opposed to decimal. So this is what decimal looks like. Now, it's pretty hard without a calculator to multiply 2.5 times negative 2.5, but if we convert it to fraction form, we're going to get negative 25 over 4. Much easier to deal with when it's in fraction form. So our coordinate there for our turning point will be x equals negative a half, and the y value is negative 25 over 4, and we're happy to leave it as that in fraction form. All right, let's go through a final example. Slightly different. So we've got 2x bracket x plus 4. All right, so let's find our four key features. What was the first one again? The easiest one, y-intercept. Substitute x equals 0 into our equation. So we're going to get two lots of 0, bracket, 0 plus 4. Now when we multiply that through, we're going to get 0. So our coordinate there will be 0, 0. Now our x-intercepts, because it's in factored form, very, very simple, we substitute y equals 0 in, we use the null factor law, and then we solve. So we're going to get 0 is equal to 2x bracket x plus 4. That means 2x must equal 0, or x plus 4 must equal 0. We solve, 
and then we put it in coordinate form. So 0, 0, and negative 4, 0. Okay, our line of symmetry. Now remember that's the midpoint between our two x-intercepts. So let's write our x-intercepts down, 0, 0, negative 4, 0. Add the two x values together, divided by 2. The y values is going to be 0. We're going to get negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And there's our equation for our line of symmetry, x equals negative 2. And this is starting to get a little bit easier. Now remember we substitute that x equals negative 2 into our equation to find our turning point. So this is what it looks like. We're going to have 2 times negative 2, bracket negative 2 plus 4. And then we're going to have negative 4 times 2, which gives us negative 8. So our point there is negative 2, negative 8. Awesome.